This part of the lesson briefly covers how to capture a date value from an Excel input box. Let's begin with a brand new blank Excel workbook so we can open Excel, create a new workbook. From the developer tab, open the Visual Basic Editor, insert a module, and then we can create a new subroutine called return at date. Let's declare a variable which can hold a date value. I'll call my variable my date as date and then we can assign a value to that variable using the result of an Excel input box. So my date equals application dot input box, and then I'll assign a prompt. I'll name the prompt parameter, so prompt colon equals, and then something simple like enter add date. Now, were I to leave things like this, the user would have absolutely no restriction on what they type into the input box. So they could type in non-date values, of course. One partial solution to this is to use the numeric type for the input box. All dates are just numbers to Excel, so if we set the type of input box to 1, as we did for numbers in previous parts of this lesson, this will partially solve the problem. Let's view the locals window just before we quickly test this. So view locals window, and then let's just change the column width so we can see things a little more clearly. And then if we step through the procedure using F8, Let's start by entering a date. Let's go with 8th Feb 2019. Now, I appreciate that this does not look much like a number at all, but when a date is evaluated, it is essentially just a number. So the date is a fancy format for a particular number. So it, if I click OK at this point, we should see that our date has been successfully captured as a date uh, in the variable. Because we have the set the type of the input box to only accepting numbers. If I were to run the subroutine again, and then this time type in, let's go for something which is not a date, so 29 Feb 2019, that's not a valid date, so it can't be interpreted as a number, and therefore we get an error message, number is not valid. That goes, of course, if I typed in just any old random text as well, I just entered today as my date. If I click OK, that's not a number either. So as long as I type in something which is a valid date, uh, then or which can't be interpreted as a valid date, then the system works quite happily, just like so. Now, it is still possible to cause a runtime error when entering a value into this input box. If we enter a number which is outside the range allowed by the date data type. So the maximum date available in the date data type in VBA is the 31st of December 9999. And that has a numeric equivalent value of 2 million 958,465. And if it sounded like I was reading that from a page, you'd be absolutely right. So if I click that, you can see I store the 31st of December, 99.99. So what happens if I try to exceed that limit? Well, of course, uh, if I were to run the subroutine again using F8, let's just put in an obviously bigger value than, than that. Let's go for 3 million. And then if I hit enter, this time I get a type mismatch error because that number exceeds the range allowed by the date data type. One simple solution to this problem is to capture the result of the input box as a variant. We've used this technique in a few previous lessons, so let's just go over that again. I can change the data type of the variable to a variant. I'll remove the type from the input box so we can enter whatever we like, but that doesn't matter because after we've captured the value, we can check if it is a date. Let's do that with an if statement. So we can say, if not, is date my date, then. We'll present the user with a simple error message saying, uh, that's not a date. And then we can simply end the subroutine or exit from the subroutine at that point, and then follow that with an end if. The final thing we'd want to do then is probably convert the subtype of the variant variable into a date. So we can do that by saying my date equals, and then we can use the C date function to convert the subtype into a date. We can now quickly test this. Let's just resize the screen a little so we can see the entire subroutine and then use F8 to step through. If we enter a valid date, let's go for 8th Feb 2019 and then hit OK. We can see that the value has been captured as a string. We then test whether that string could be converted into a date. And if not, we would see the that's not a date message. But as it can, we then perform the explicit conversion and then we capture a date value.
If you still wanted to include the type parameter for the input box to ensure that it would only accept numeric inputs, there is one extra thing you would need to do as well. Let's bring back the type parameter so that we can set the type to one. That means it will only accept numeric inputs. If I use the F8 key now, we can see that if I try to enter a value that can't be converted into a date, so let's go for 29th of Feb 2019 again. So we retrieve that number is not valid error message. So if I go back now and let's convert that back to, let's say the 8th of Feb 2019. If I click OK, I am about to evaluate whether or not the date I've typed in is actually a date. A small problem with that is I don't know if you can make out here in the locals window is that the values already been converted into a double. And sadly, that means that the isDate function doesn't interpret this as a date. And I'm told that that's not a date. So one way to solve that problem, if I stop the procedure, is to not pass the number of the myDate variable into the isDate function. It's to pass a formatted version of that number into the isDate function that looks like a date, <laughs> which all seems a little bit roundabout, doesn't it? But here's how it would work. Rather than passing in myDate, I would pass in the result of the format function. So I'm going to format myDate using an expression which would use a single d then three lowercase m's, and then four uppercase y's. So that would convert any number into a format that shows a single digit for the day of the month, the three letter abbreviation of the month name, Jan, Feb, etc. then the four digit number, just as I've been typing in the date in the input box. So if I test this system again now using the F8 key, I know that I can't enter an invalid date because the numeric type prevents me from doing so. But if I do type in 8th Feb 2019 and then click OK, the number 43,504 will be eventually converted into or formatted as 8 Feb 2019. And so the end result when I step through to this point is that I get my date captured successfully. I'm not sure if you think that's a little bit more effort than it's worth, but if you wanted the full example, that's what it would look like.